the entrance and the fountain. Blessed indeed is he who honors the law of the Lord day and night. He will heal his fruit in due season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So the, uh, today is the, uh, people will be very confused, but we, so we have, uh, on the Fridays for that man issue, so we have the 745 Mass as, uh, as an outlet uh, for the men who would like to attend Mass after the morning session of that man issue. Today we also celebrate today the Feast of St. Jerome, a priest and doctor of the church, so um, very famous for his knowledge of scripture having translated not only the Hebrew and Greek, but into Latin, giving the, uh, the church the first Vulgate, but also known in particular for his knowledge of scripture and to know Jesus Christ. We must know scripture. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. So certainly a day for us to appreciate the gift that is sacred scripture given to the church. So let us prepare ourselves entering into these sacred mysteries, first acknowledging our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. Jerome a living and tender love for sacred scripture, grant that your people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by your word and find in it the font of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Have you ever in your lifetime commanded the morning and shown the dawn its place for, for taking hold of the ends of the earth till the wicked are shaken from its surface? The earth is changed as is clay by the seal and dyed as though it were a garment. But from the wicked the light is withheld and the arm of pride is shattered. Have you entered into the sources of the sea or walked about in the depths of the abyss? Have the gates of death been shown to you, or have you seen the gates of darkness? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me, if you know all. Which is the way to the dwelling place of light, and where is the abode of darkness? That you may take them to their boundaries and set them on their homeward paths. You know because you were born before them, and the number of your years is great. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am of little account. What can I answer you? I put my hand over my mouth. Though I have spoken once, I will not do so again. Though twice, I will do so no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord. Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest, you scrutinize. With all my ways, you are familiar. God, God, Lord, where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sink to the netherworld, you are present there. If I take the wings of dawn, if I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me, and your right hand hold me fast. Truly you have formed my inmost being, you knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. 
Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to them, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The, uh, we really just uh, get a sampling of the Book of Job um, when we listen to this cycle at daily Mass. Um, so just this week we heard about Job's troubles and in his first response, the, the, when he finally speaks up, what he first has to say, part of his defense with his friends with whom he speaks, and now suddenly we're already at the end of the book of Job and we hear God's response. Um, so we've just gotten a taste of the book and there's so much more that's there. Uh, the majority of the book is composed of these dialogues between Job's friends and their remonstrations with him and Job's answers. But uh, we really never arrive at a completely satisfactory answer about why Job has suffered or what the meaning of his sufferings uh, is, or why he would suffer if, in fact, he had not committed any sin. Uh, we don't really arrive at any conclusive answer until finally we get the Lord's response, and that's what we heard today. Um, the Lord addressed Job out of the storm cloud and said, and here's his response. And the response, I have to say, in some ways, I've oftentimes felt like it was not very satisfying. It wasn't, seemed, didn't seem to be satisfactory. Because the response that God gives is, well, where were you when the world was created? Did you ever see the foundations of the world? Did you ever see all of these magnificent wonders that have been created? And Job's answer to that is just one of humility. He says, I have nothing to say. How can I answer? I cover my mouth. I have no words to say. The reason why I say it, it seems unsatisfactory is because it's like you're waiting at least for some explanation. Well, at least, you know, make some sense of it. So why did Job suffer so much? So give us some explanation of that suffering. And the only explanation that's given is, I'm the Lord God and I've made all of these things. So who are you? It's kind of a version of what maybe your, your mother would say, well, mom, why do we have to do that? Because I'm your mother and I said so. It's, it's, a, version of, it's a version of that. But on further reflection, I think thinking about this answer that God gives, I think maybe there is something to be said about that. And I don't mean just because it's the, well, I'm God and I said so. Although God can do that. God, he is God and he can say so, and that's perfectly fine. But whereas I think when we, maybe we heard that from our mother growing up, that's kind of a way of sort of avoiding the argument. The mother just says, well, I told you to do it, so just be quiet. In this case, though, what God gives as an answer is not just I'm God and I'm in charge, but he says, think of all of these wonders of creation. You are not there. You're not the one who made them. I'm the one who made them. And all of these things, from the depths of the sea to the ends of the earth, to know its breadth and its width, what the Lord holds up before Job is the wonder of creation. And so he holds up the beauty of everything that has been made. And so it leaves us then pondering, okay, so why, why is it that suffering would exist in the world? And God's answer is, behold the beauty of creation. Behold all of the beauty of everything that has been made around you. Number one, don't, don't take that for granted. See, we, we tend in suffering to think, oh, everything's horrible. And God says, no, it's not. Look around you at all the, all the beauty that exists. So everything isn't horrible. Everything isn't lost. But it also, I think, gives us a moment to reflect that God has a wisdom and a plan that is reflected in the natural order of creation. So why wouldn't God also have a same beautiful and wise plan that would be reflected in our own individual lives, especially when we have to carry the cross? And God doesn't explain that, but I think he gives us that, that 
um, thought to consider that, in fact, there may be some beauty and some deeper wisdom and deeper plan that is there that we may not fully understand while we're here, but that we can contemplate and appreciate in eternity. Um, and that actually is maybe a much more satisfying answer. So sometimes there are things that, that God doesn't explain, and that's okay, because God is God. But we sense the beauty and the wisdom of his divine plan that unfolds over time, throughout all of time, and unfolds even in our own individual lives. Um, and so we can contrast that with the gospel. We hear about the pride of Chorazin, Poseidon, uh, of Capernaum, these cities that are so elevated and so proud. Um, no, no, they will be cast down. Instead, the humility of Job is what we hear in the first reading. He covers his mouth. He has nothing to say. The cities that Jesus talks to may want to brag in their pride and their insolence. Job, in fact, then closes his lips in humility. But you would think if anyone was going to respond graciously to the Lord, you'd think it would be these towns that have been so greatly blessed. Why, why wouldn't they, in fact, recognize all the gifts that the Lord had given them? And if anyone was going to complain, wouldn't you think it would be Job, who had suffered so much? You'd think he would have reason to complain. But oddly enough, the righteousness comes not from the one who's been blessed, but the one who's been cursed. The righteous witness comes from Job, the one who bore so much suffering, not from the one who had received all this, these blessings, these towns that Jesus mentioned in the gospel. It's an interesting, interesting observation. Um, so we ask the Lord then to bless us, especially in times of trial. Help us to recognize the wisdom of God, even when maybe it might not always be apparent. Uh, for us to offer, our, offer ourselves up to the Lord, trusting that his ways are wiser and greater uh, and more profound than our own. We stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, for the holy people of God, that nourished especially by the word of God and sacred scripture, we might know our Lord Jesus more deeply. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those affected by the path of storms, for their uh, safety, for their protection, and for blessings as they rebuild. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of St. Therese of Lisieux, we pray for vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those contemplating their entrance into the church and who are uh, preparing to receive the sacraments at Easter, we ask for the Lord to bless them in their discovery of the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, we uh, commend them into the merciful hands of our loving God and ask for their eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, we pray. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. I had more to say about Job than I thought I did this morning. <laughs> Job got me thinking. So. Dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. 
but the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word, following the example of St. Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as in the festival of St. Jerome you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise is without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Jerome, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Louis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, 
Stir up the hearts of your faithful so that attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow, and by following it, obtain life everlasting. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you.